Simcoe County Gisus Goldberg acknowledges that we are situated on the traditional land of the Anishinaabe people. We acknowledge the near presence of First Nations, Métis, and Negro people on this land, and are committed to move forward in the spirit of reconciliation and respect. Please remain standing for the singing of O Canada. Wally, what are you talking about? Oh, <laughs> uh, mm, I was just killing it on the comedy stage, in my mind. I love to make people laugh. Yeah, laughing is the best. Did you know, according to Psychology Today, laughter takes away pain, makes you work harder, connects people, and improves the flow of oxygen to the heart and the brain? Laughter really is the best medicine. <laughs> Wow, Ksenia, did you research that? Nope, it's right here in the script. <laughs> You're not supposed to tell the audience that. All I know is that there is nothing quite like laughing with friends. <laughs> and laughs are contagious too. There are all sorts of different ones. Some are loud, some hardly make any noise, and the funniest ones is when people snort. <laughs> we all need a good laugh today, so just get this Hyde Park News off to a great start. Let's see if you can watch next funny laughing video with a straight face. was funny. We should really get going on with this episode, though. Yeah, but stay tuned to find out how you can make us all laugh on next week's show. Today is Friday, April 30th, day two. We bet that you really miss hearing Miss Whitley's voice on the announcements. Well, she is here today to say hello and send us all a little message. Good morning, Seekers. It's Mrs. Whitley. Today's my day working from my home office, but I had to sneak downstairs to give you a little message to add to the Hyde Park news. Here we find ourselves in the middle of our third pivot. You are all tech masters by now. 
your parents, well, they ought to receive an honorary teaching degree. They've been amazingly supportive of you and your learning and our very hard working Hyde Park staff. And we really appreciate that. I keep asking myself, why is this third pivot so tough when we're so much better at doing all the pieces of it? Well, I think it's because we're exhausted. Quite frankly, we're feeling a little bit beaten down. I've had to focus on ways to distract myself. How about you? What have you done to make things different and um, learning a little bit more exciting for you? So I wanted to share some of the things that I have done in the last two waves and, and also during this pivot as well. So I've always been a knitter, a very simple knitter, but I, I decided to challenge myself with some new learning and learn how to make socks. So I have, this is the second one actually. And the, um, this is a, although there's lots of mistakes in it, a sock that actually looks like a sock. And I realized there's a lot of math in knitting. I had to count and plan and measure so much learning in that, although not traditional, not the things that I learned in school. Uh, I, I realized that that really challenged me and distracted me and brought me some joy. My mom would be so proud of me that I have taken up some crocheting. That was really hard for me working with one needle, but I've managed to actually make a pair of slippers again with lots of mistakes, but they look like slippers. And that was um, challenging for me, but brought me some joy and distracted me from COVID for a little while. I've been working with a heat press. That was really hard. I was inspired by some other teaching staff in our school actually. And I was able to use that heat press to make some new pillows for our couches during the uh, second wave. So that was fun. But what's brought our family the most joy is some outdoor learning in the last little while. So I'm going to share with you a story. My son was out golfing and um, there was a, quite a large dog from the neighbors and the dog did what dogs do, dug up uh, a nest that he had found. And um, there was a rabbit there. Anyway, things didn't turn out so well for the mother rabbit, but my son was able to trace back to the nest and um, rescue the little babies who were now going to be abandoned. He came home with these baby rabbits in a flower pot. And Mr. Whitley and I were like, oh dear, what has he done? Anyway, we quickly as a family got online and we did some research on how can humans raise wild baby rabbits. And we engaged in lots and lots of learning. Um, our first learning was that they don't digest milk um, like humans do. They need to be on a kitten version of milk. So we were able to contact the local pet store and get some kitten formula. And I'm really proud to say that here we are three weeks later and against all odds, the odds were 10% survival rate that a human could raise a wild baby rabbit. And we still have two of the three babies that were rescued that day. So I'm sitting downstairs here and I'm next to their little uh, habitat we've created for them. And I want to share them with you because I think they'll bring you a little bit of joy. They certainly have brought our family a lot of joy. So I would like to introduce you to Rosie and she's doing quite well. Here's Rosie. She actually looks like a rabbit. When she was first rescued, she looked like a little maybe piece of bubble gum almost. So we've been feeding them kitten formula from a dropper, an eyedropper, and uh, they've recently upgraded to be able to eat from a syringe. So it's a little faster. And this is Phil. Phil's a little chubbier. Here's Phil. So they're eating kitten formula. They've just graduated this week to eating some lettuce, which was exciting for us because we our plan is to release them back out into the wild as soon as we can get them eating solids and drinking water for themselves. So it's been an incredible experience. Um, I hope we continue to be successful and uh, it's brought us a lot of joy. And we've realized that there's been a lot of learning in, in what we have done. Um, so it's been fun and totally distracting. Anyway, Rosie and Phil, they wanna say and remind you all, we care about you very much, Seekers. 
We hope you're working really, really hard and we expect you to be kind to each other. Have a great weekend and an awesome third week online. Take care. <laughs> Those bunnies are so cute. Thanks, Miss Whitley. Amazing yearbook covers have been coming in at lightning speed this week. And we want to remind those that are wanting to get involved that today is the final day to send in a photo of your cover. Today, just send them right to Miss Wagner instead of your teacher, AJ Wagner at scdsb.on.ca. Remember, if you have shared a picture with us already, then you must keep the original covers in a safe place in case yours gets chosen. Hey, I think it's time once again to go live. Ready, set, go live. Okay, thanks girls. Oh, we're, we're coming to the class. Okay, let's just um, knock on the door. Um, um, hi! Uh, uh, oh. Wait, I see something. Let's listen. I'm looking at the whole place to myself. Yeah, but I miss the kids. Me too. Oh man, that was a little sad to see all of those empty classrooms. Glad to see the ants are holding down the floor while we're not there. Apparently, over the last couple of weeks, Kids in our community have been having some fun and making a difference too. As part of one of his asynchronous activities, Mason and Miss Bruning's class create an amazing obstacle course in his backyard. Watch here. In Miss Fletcher Hovings, Miss Galley, and Miss Collins class, one of their students was caught red-handed. Yep, Alice was caught on film cleaning up the garbage around our school. What an earth ranger she is. Thank you, Alice, for making our community beautiful. Wow. Wow. You know who really deserves acknowledgement in all of our lives over this year? I mean, they always deserve it. But somehow this year, it seems super important to recognize these people. Yep, I'm talking about our one and only moms. And that is where you come in. We really think that moms have been hit hard over this pandemic. So we want you to be sure to go above and beyond for them next Sunday on Mother's Day. That's right. Give them breakfast in bed, clean the house, a card, and lots of hugs and kisses. We also want to give you a chance to come on the Hyde Park News and make them laugh. Tell a joke that you know your mom would laugh at because, as Ksenia said, it is the best medicine. Now, definitely no yo mama jokes, but maybe some my mama jokes that are kind and make your mom laugh. Record yourself on video saying the joke and dedicate it to your mom. If you're using a phone to record, make sure it is horizontal like this. We look forward to laughing along with you and your moms. Ukulilu hena Sengi chukahamnida Slamat hari jadi Bailu anne sulla Som geburtstag viel Glück Zwei usani versel Imi tamrom dressabia Sana hel huaya gamil Sorry seji kwai lo Juni shang ju kwai lo Sere tan rojen dan Na na, tanti auguri a te. Woo! Your birthdays for today and next week are Benjamin F, Simi A, Audrey C, Sophia L, Chiara S, Kennedy K, Rochelle H, Jules F, 
Levi C, Sydney Y, Ella R, Lexi M, Lauren F, and Nyla F. Happy happy birthday! Happy birthday! Okay, guys. Um, I've been working as my on my stand up, as you know, and I have a joke for you. Okay, ready? Knock knock. Who's there? Tank. Tank who? No, 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 Tank you. <laughs> And thank you, Seekers, for watching this week's Hyde Park News. And we look forward to your videos. Oh, by the way, send them to ajwagner at scdsb.on.ca. Have a great weekend! Have a great weekend!